السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Let me express my heartfelt appreciation to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts on this very important topic and also to uh, commend the early speakers. I have benefited immensely, just like every attendee here. Now, uh, the topic polygyny in Islam. Um, challenges and solutions. Uh, I'm sure if it's about making friends, it will be very difficult with this topic. But uh, inshallah, I'm sure at the end of the day, I'm going to make more friends from my sisters today. <laughs> yeah. You know, Islam has come to resolve, to resolve issues. Allah has come to solve problems. Allah has come to give us the solutions to the challenges, especially what we know very little about. Remember when the Quran was to be revealed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah to Toha, and the same thing in uh, Surah to Toha, Quran 20, verse 123, a promise is made that you go to the world, my guidance is coming. And whenever the guidance shall come, whoever shall follow it, such a person or a group of people will never be misled, neither shall they come into contact with misfortune, they will never be destroyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah to Baqarah, so upon them there will be no fear neither shall they suffer any form of tribulations i want you to know that what we witness in the world today is the consequence of the flagrant disregard of the guidance of almighty allah allah tells us in quran chapter 30 verse 41 quran chapter 30 verse 41 after creating order and tranquility in the world after perfecting his creation what do you see zohar al fasad fil barri wal bahr bima kasabat aydin nas liyudhikuhum ba'd allazi amilu la hallahum yarjun allah says corruption vices evil has appeared on the surface of the earth it has appeared on land and on seas it has appeared everywhere not because of what Allah has created, but because of what your hands have caused. It's because of what our hands have brought upon ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I allow you to taste the evil consequences of what you have caused. Maybe perhaps if you see the evil consequences of your flagrant disregard of my guidance, maybe you will return to the path. And also for us to know that there is what is called good life. Hayat and tajiba. There is good life, regardless of the system of marriage that you currently are in. There is a good life. It is not the name of the marriage, it is not the system of the marriage, but the content of the participants in the marriage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran chapter 16, verse 97, Man amila soleha, min dhakarin au untha, wa huwa mu'minun, fala nuhiyano hayatan tojiba. Whoever does righteousness, whether male or female, so long as you are a believer, Allah says, I'm going to grant you a good life and I'm going to reward you with the best of what you did. So the question is this, who is making fool of us? Who is trying to describe our religion for us? Why are Muslims at the receiving end? Because they don't even understand their religion. You'll be shocked that Muslims themselves are the greatest enemies of their religion. Muslims themselves, out of ignorance, they are the ones who condemn their religion. Out of ignorance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not joke with knowledge. Allah has nothing to do with the religion of the ignorance. Allah tells you straight away, Allah yes, we. Can you compare them 
those who have knowledge and those who do not have knowledge all of you may claim to be worshiping me as far as Allah is concerned Allah says I'm not impressed Allah says Inama yaksha Allah min ulama. those who truly worship Allah are those who worship Allah with knowledge Allah does not joke with knowledge that is why when Adam alayhi salam was created the first point is knowledge I granted Adam the knowledge of everything. My brothers and sisters, you cannot be better than the quality of the knowledge of Islam that you possess. Anyone who does not have a thing cannot give. Your perception and understanding of Islam today is out of what we have chosen to be our own definition of Islam. So we have to rescue ourselves because we cannot rescue Islam. We need to rescue ourselves from the wrong perception that we have about Islam because everything about Islam is about solutions to challenges in this world. So I'm going to start that way. Now, let us start. What is polygamy? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. It appears I'm going to have a lot of friends because the sisters today at the end of my lecture i'm going to ask them to raise their hand and raise four fingers for four wives you know not necessarily because i want your husband to have four wives i'm going to prove it to your husband that it is not a prescription when a doctor prescribes a medication you don't take it you are in trouble so let's start by saying that in islam there are two types of marriages Islam encourages monogamy and it also permits polygyny. Polygamy is the marriage of the world. Polygamy is a marriage that may apply to men or women having more than one spouse. So when a man has more than one wife, that is polygyny. When a woman has more than one husband, that is polyandry. Both are categories of polygamy. What Islam permits is not polygamy. What Islam has permitted is limited polygyny. I, and I'm using it carefully. Limited polygyny because look at our accusers. Look at those who are talking about Islam. Because they make us look so foolish that why, why does your religion allow marriage be, um, you know, by one man to more than a woman? In this age and time then you want to you know push back the question to them it is your way of life that encourages that not islam islam has come to correct the evil of the type of polygamy that you practice because it is an endless polygamy it is a limitless polygamy is the marriage of one man to more than a hundred women women and i'm going to explain that let's go into the books you won't find anywhere it is only in islam and that is in quran chapter 4 verse 3 it is only in quran chapter 4 verse 3 that you see allah saying marry two three or four but if you fear that you will not be able to do justly with them marry only one you will never see marry only one in any other scripture it does not exist in any other scripture check the old testament what you find there is that they talk about abraham they gave Abraham three wives. We know of Abraham's two wives. We know of Hajar and who? Sarah. You know, yes. So if you talk about marriage to more than, uh, you know, one wife, you are following the traditions of early prophets. Most of them married more than one wife. But you have in Old Testament, they said Abraham has three wives. And Abraham is the father of faith. As described in the Bible. Then you have Solomon getting married to 600 wives and 300 concubines. You find that also in the Bible. Go to any religion, even Hinduism. The Lord Hare Krishna is said to have gotten married to 16,108 wives. You know. So, it is... It does not exist. Okay, leave all those stories. Now come to Nigeria. In Nigeria, in America... In UK, it is polygamous. And I will tell you why. They describe the law 
as a law that encourages marriage between one man and one woman to the exclusion of all others you know what that means is that legally you should get married to one wife but you are allowed to have partners in their hundreds it is not illegal to have partners therefore you have one legal wife then you have a hundred other girlfriends a system that encourages one wife that is legal and a hundred girlfriends that are illegal makes you eventually get hooked to 101 wives islam says no it shouldn't be more than four Kevirula. no i'm testing you i'm testing the microphone Kevirula. there was something i said which the sisters love so much the moment i said polygamy or polygyny is not even prescribed polygyny is only permitted i saw sisters did you hear what he said so we are going to go into some of the challenges who am i addressing today i'm addressing that muslim sister who is already married who is apprehensive that my, hus my husband may likely marry another i'm going to address you inshallah i'm also addressing the muslim sister who is going into that marriage where there is an existing marriage i also intend to address the spinster the single sister who is afraid of going into a polygamous so to speak marriage i'm also addressing the brother who is the pilot of the team you know preparing you to have the clearest understanding of what may happen or may not happen in your life i have said it clearly islam permits monogamy that is the marriage of one man to one woman it is sunnah it is legal it is halal it is allowed it is permitted in islam so don't say that because only islam says but if you are afraid that you will not be able to do justice then marry only eh? only marry only one but let's look at that what's the meaning of if you are afraid that you may not be able to do justice that is what sisters say and then people always rush immediately to a verse of the quran i'll give us i think it's quran chapter 4 verse 129 where allah says even if you desire to you know do justice you may never you may not be able to do justice i just want us to understand the meaning of justice in that concept one allah does not command the impossible allah will never ask you to be just when allah knows that justice is impossible so no two verses are contradictory of each other there is a difference between emotional justice and material justice I want us to get this clearly so that we don't rely on that point to tell our husband they have said you cannot do justice and there is no difference between the justice you are expected to discharge on your wives if you have more than one and the justice expected of you on your children there is no single difference between the two there was a time somebody opted to give a camel as a gift to one of his children and Professor Salam asked him how many children do you have four how many camels do you have one you are not competent to give a camel as a gift it tells you so what is this idea of emotional justice which is the focus scholars all over the world are agreed on this fact that what is meant by the fact that you cannot be just even if you desire to be is referring only to emotional justice which nobody is ever able to give equally you have two children i'm going to start with your children you ask fatima please sweep this room then you ask the other one mariam please sweep the other room before i come back on returning fatima has swept the room but mariam was here to sweep the room she refused blatantly to do it my question i want to ask you is it possible for you to love both of them equally will you answer me please it's possible is it, it is, is it possible for you to love the obedient child with the disobedient child the same level of love can you answer me please 
Is it yes or no? So it's possible. Somebody will obey you and somebody will disobey you. It's possible to love them equally. In, interesting, Allah says it's not possible. So you are wrong. Allah says it's not possible. You cannot love them equally. Allah says naturally you are better disposed to somebody who obeys you than somebody who disobeys you. On the contrary to your yes, you will be angry with the one who disobeys you. And that is a fact if you are not unjust. So the same thing happens. Allah says, I will not query or ask you why you do not love this as much as you love this. But when it comes to material justice, it must be equal. The meaning of material justice is what you have capacity to do. In determining what school they should attend, it must be the same quality because you have the capacity to do that. Do you agree with me? You don't agree? You know here, this place, no, no, listen. This place, we have come for Allah to rescue us. You may have, you know, when I saw the topic, I said, okay, me, I have the greatest challenge of all. But, inshallah, many of us, brothers and sisters, will leave this place better than we came in. Can you say amen? Including myself. Because I know you love yourself. So by the time you finish listening to the reasons behind everything Allah has done, you will know that there is nothing you can do in this world that will benefit Allah. Think about it. When they say religion, religion does not benefit Allah at all. If the whole world comes together to obey Allah, it doesn't add anything to his kingdom. If the whole world comes together to disobey him, it doesn't take anything away from his kingdom. It will never affect the alternation of night and day. What is the story? You are the beneficiary of your religion. You are the one to benefit. And when you disobey, you are the one to suffer. When you so may we not suffer. Can we say Amin? I know I'm so hated that people don't want to say Amin when I speak. May we not suffer. But that Amin is not in the hands of Allah, it's in your hand. I'm going to tell you it's in your hand. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, When you call upon me, I answer, but Fali listen and obey me so that you will survive. Most of our prayers, I call them offside. What's the meaning of off offside? When two teams are playing a football match, instead of this team to dribble and dribble and play well, one of them just went and sat, you know, in the 18 box of the other, waiting for the ball. When eventually gets there and you score, what will they say? Eh? Offside. The meaning of that is when you ask Allah to do something, you must fulfill the conditions, precedent. Allah knows more than you do. You know nothing. I won't say you know very little. You know nothing about yourself. You didn't ask that you were coming into this world. You have a package and the maker, the manufacturer of, of this world gave you a manual that will make it work. And today, we are all victims of our own transgression. You know, Allah says, Wataku fitna, la tu sibana ledina zola muminkun haso, fear a trial. That it is not only those who started it that will suffer it. Everybody will suffer. May we not suffer. Okay, she. So, I was talking about the fact that material justice is what Allah will take you up on. He has said he will not take you up on emotional justice. It is impossible. You have two wives. And you return from work. And the first one you met stood up. Embraced you. Removed your cap gave you a cup of water, started interacting with you, begging you that maybe you, you must have been offended outside. Just take it easy, my darling. The food is ready. Just like Ajia did, you know. I was imagining how lucky, you know, her husband, you know. <laughs> but she has left. I would have told her that I have exactly the same set of people in my house. You know, before they chose me for this topic, you will have... Uh, Good news. I have four wives at home. Good news. Now, very good. Alhamdulillah. My wives are here. So, Alhamdulillah. So, what I am saying is, one wife met you and then welcomed you 
with, you know, the best form of warm reception you can imagine. On passing that chair, you go to another wife. That one crossed her leg and hissed. <laughs> Foolish people. After they must have wasted, you know, and said all sorts of things you cannot print. And you, you decided to be better than her morally. And you said, Salam alaikum. It was the other one that greeted you. Now you offer to greet this one. Salam alaikum. I said, Get out, get out, Loshi. Idiots. Is it your type? Me and you. Ah. The question I won't ask the sisters. Now, brothers, is it possible for you to be favorably disposed to the two of them the same way? I die for you. So. That is emotional justice.